Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Well, it's kind of a interesting day in the news and it's quite possible that by the time you watch this or at least later this evening, we could see a great expansion of the war in Europe. Maybe not, but there's a lot of buzz going on. We wanna to get to that and, and some other things in the news that I think are very important because the tensions are building. Um, average American, like we talked about this morning, are totally clueless. They, they don't know. You know they're, they're watching some TV ch channel or something going on in music industry or pop culture or whatever. They're, they're, not, they're not paying attention. But the fact is, is things are happening. It's building. And folks, um, in my unprofessional assessment, we are very, very close, very much on the doorstep of a kinetic World War III. Um, and we'll get to that here in just a second. Before we talk about war stuff, I wanna mention something that was in the news that no one has covered. I don't, have not seen anyone really talk about it, um, but it could be, it could be significant. Um, this right here, Brazil suspends beef exports to China after a mad cow disease case. Now, this could be a complete nothing burger, and I'm not saying that there's anything going on here, but it was just a few weeks ago, I think two, maybe three weeks ago, I was talking to you folks about um, what's happened in the poultry industry, how they've completely decimated the poultry industry, killed 60 plus million birds, um, caused shortages of eggs, uh, prices to just skyrocket in the poultry industry, all because of the, the suspicion of a potential, maybe existing illness amongst the birds, which very much aligns with all of this, you know, great reset plan of ending this dependency on meat and eating bugs, right? And I said then, I said, we very well could possibly see the same thing happen in the next year or two when it comes to cattle. Maybe this is something, maybe this isn't, but I just wanted to point this out to be on your radar because Brazil is saying that they had uh, a mad cow disease case and we import a lot of beef from Brazil, a lot of beef. Um, and and, and be, in fact, Brazil's uh, beef market there has, has exploded, uh, partly because America's uh, beef market has just nearly collapsed. Not quite. I know that's a little extreme to say, but certainly last year with the drought and the fertilizer prices and everything. Remember, I, I talked about that. How just the state of Oklahoma alone lost about six hundred thousand cattle. Um, the, 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 it dropped in in number, so we're we're seeing a, a major hit on our end, and then now uh, Brazil's cattle could potentially, they might maybe have a a mad cow disease outbreak, and because there's a close connection uh, because of imports and the amount uh, last year, uh, the imports from Brazil skyrocketed. Who knows if that would find its way into the American uh, cattle herd? So I just wanted to point that out because it may happen. <clears throat> now on to some, some big things. In case you haven't been hearing about this, well, let's go back just a little bit. A few weeks ago, <clears throat> Russia was saying that on the one year anniversary of them invading Ukraine, that it's gonna be something big happen. You know, they, they've been alluding to that, that it's gonna be big. <clears throat> That's why there was all this hype and, and, and uh, perceived hype of uh, Putin's speech just a couple of days ago because they were expecting, everyone was expecting something big because Russia's been playing this up. Well, here we are on the eve of their invasion. In fact, by the time many of you watch this, it will have been exactly one year since Russia invaded. And there is a lot of rumors. Now you must understand, as far as I can tell, these are all rumors. I've not seen any proof of any of this, but these are rumors coming from ministries of defense and from major news agencies. So there's definitely something going on. And basically it involves Moldova. Moldova is a small little country uh, to the southwest of, of Ukraine on the border there. Um, and it's, it's kind of an important country only in the sense of its strategic closeness to Odessa, which is the major port in Ukraine. And if, if Russia was able to be in that area, 
well, they could, you know, easily take Ukraine. Well, what's interesting and unique about Moldova is there's a tiny little strip of land um, between, it's in Moldova, but it's on the Ukrainian border and it's called Transnistria. Uh, now, this is a breakaway region that <clears throat> is officially recognized by some people, but not others. Um, and, and they are extremely pro-Russian. In fact, there have been Russian troops stationed in this little tiny strip of land uh, for quite a while. And so it's all about that, about that little strip of land. Uh, Ukraine uh, claims that, um, that, that Russia is going to use that strip of land to move in and invade Moldova. Uh, Russia is claiming that that Ukraine is going to dress up like Russians and invade Moldova and blame it on the Russians. Uh, so there's a lot of back and forth on this. And because both of them are talking so much about it, I think that there's something here. And while this may seem very insignificant in the, in the light of everything, I think that there could be some big significance because over the last several weeks, uh, there has been little blips of talk amongst uh, a lot of NATO countries indicating that if Russia expanded this war into another country that wasn't NATO, that that could possibly be uh, enough for NATO to, to actually start engaging against Russia directly. Because the theory is, is that, well, if he's expanding it to other countries, the, he'll eventually get to a NATO country and do the same. And Poland, of course, is the one that's that's really uh, worried about that. Uh, Russian uh, Ministry of Defense here is they've released a statement and they're claiming that Ukrainian forces are preparing to stage false provocations in the breakaway region of Transnistria in order to provoke, provide justification for an invasion of Moldova. Uh, and so... Uh, what they're saying is, is that Ukraine is going to make it look like that it was Russians uh, and then say, oh, Russia is going into Moldova because Ukraine, Zelensky's already pledged that he would support Moldova, that he would come to their defense. Not like they can hardly keep up with Russia already, but that he would do that. And so if you can kind of see this whole drama playing out. And I think a lot of people are tuning it out because it's, it's a little confusing. Um, or they just think it's not that significant. But I think this would be very significant. Russian Ministry of Defense again, here's another one, um, <clears throat> says that this will be carried out by alleged Russian troops from the territory. Um, Kiev has stepped up its preparations uh, for this invasion of Tran Transnistria, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. Um, uh, the numbers that are coming out that are being reported that anywhere between 25 and 30,000 Ukrainian troops are now being uh, placed along the border there uh, to, to possibly do something. I, I mean, who knows what's going on? And again, this could be nothing, uh, but it does seem like that something is about ready to happen there. Polish border guard has uh, been reinforcing the border between uh, Poland and Russia in anticipation of a potential uh, increase in, in activity and possibly an invasion. Uh, so, so this is coming across and then uh, kind of shifting gears slightly, moving over to China. Um, all this talk back and forth that, that China is trying to support Russia with, with lethal weapons. Uh, we've been hearing that for the last few days. I talked about that this morning and I think yesterday. Um, State Department says that they have classified documents that will prove this and that they are you know, potentially going to be releasing those. Um, they've, they've kind of drawn that, that line in the sand and says that, you know, if China does this, they're crossing the line. Um, at the same time, of course, we are supplying troops to Ukraine and we're sending troops into Taiwan. Uh, that was also announced today. Well, um, <clears throat> Spiegel uh, International, which, you know, whether or not this is reputable uh, intel or not, but it is going around and there's, there seems to be also uh, some confirmation, at least a little bit from the State Department, that China is reportedly negotiating with Russia to supply kamikaze drones to Russia. Now, uh, what I suspect in reading this, that I think they're gonna split hairs on technicality. It appears that, that Russia will be buying unarmed drones. These are the kamikaze drones. Um, you've probably already seen them. Uh, some of them come from Iran where they, they're very simple drones. I mean, they're, they're not hard to, to make or operate. 
they're literally just a, 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 a very simple drone um, that has a warhead attached to the, the nose of it, and as it flies into something, it explodes. Well, apparently the intel is, is that Russia will be purchasing these drones without the warhead. So they're buying the drone and the technology to use them, but not the warhead. Um, and so is, is China gonna come back and say, well, we're not selling them lethal weapons, we're just selling them drones, you know? I mean, you know, they could just be hobby paper airplane flyers that are, that are wanting to purchase these drones. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, I, I doubt that the United States is going to accept that as an excuse, but it does appear that that is happening and we could definitely see even more escalation. Uh, here we go. The U.S. State Department says China is not neutral in this and in the Russian-Ukrainian war, uh, but rather supports Moscow political, economically, and through propaganda. And so now it appears that they're trying to also supply uh, some actual stuff. Uh, along with China doing that, they're also calling on the United States to provide the intelligence that they've gathered on the Nord Stream blast. So. Uh, they're, they're, they're kind of definitely in this case seems to be taking uh, Russia's side on this. So we, we've got them calling for uh, the United States to, to show what they have. Um, NATO Chief Stoltenberg tells Reuters that the alliance has seen signs that China is considering and maybe planning sending arms. So here again, we've got NATO confirming the report of the, of the kamikaze drones, at least to a certain extent that they have uh, intel that's saying that, that it looks like it's happening. Uh, and of course, you know, it's bad that China would be sending those drones, but it's okay for this to happen because the U.S. is now, I mean, do you remember, hold on just a second. Do you remember, what was it? it? I don't think it was two weeks ago. It may have been, time's flying. It could have been two weeks, two or three weeks, but I don't even think it's been that far that uh, when it all started to hit the, the buzz about sending fighter jets, over to Ukraine and, and Biden just stopped and he said, we are not doing that. We are not doing that. We're not sending F-16. We're not sending fighter jets to Ukraine. We draw the line at tanks. Well, <clears throat> according to Victoria Newland, the U.S. is now discussing the possibility of supplying fifth generation fighters to Ukraine. Fifth generation fighters. So I guess maybe, maybe Biden didn't technically tell a lie. I'd have to go back and I'd have to watch the clip that he said that in. I remember watching it a couple weeks ago, but maybe he said they weren't gonna send F-16s over, but it's okay to send F-22s and F-35s. It's okay to send uh, our, our newest, most expensive, most advanced fighter jets over. Um, and so I, I suspect this is gonna, this, they're talking long-term. Um, I mean, how long would it take to teach and train a Ukrainian pilot to fly an F-35 or an F-22? I don't know. Uh, I suspect a lot longer than an F-16. Uh, they're just a more advanced weapon. I understand these F-16s have been uh, refitted a few times in advance, but, but they were making it sound like we were sending some old ones over. And then now we're talking about sending the most advanced fighter jets on the planet over there to Ukraine. Uh, I mean, might as well just throw in some B-1s and B-2s and, uh, you know, just anything like that. Just, just go ahead. Just send it all. Send it all over there. But it's gonna take a while because it's now, they're now saying those Abrams, remember the Abrams tanks that they said, okay, okay, they, they weren't gonna do it, then they were, and then they weren't, and they weren't sure if it was possible and they had to work out the logistics. Well, they finally said, yeah, well, okay, we'll send a Abrams tanks. We'll send the, these big, big old Abrams tanks over. Except now they're saying that it's gonna be like a year, year and a half before they get there. If Ukraine can even stand another year, year and a half, do you realize how deeply this is gonna be? I mean, already NATO is saying that they can't even keep up with the ammunition demand. And we're a year in. What, what would it be like in a, another year? Um, we, we've sent, uh, I've seen numbers upwards of $200 billion. I saw today another, I believe another $2 billion a package, weapons package plan is being developed. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's like every week, half a million, billions, tens of billions, all the time. 
So how much more are we gonna be sending over there? I mean, do they even have the manpower? Do they even have the people to, to, to keep you know putting into that meat grinder? Um, and, and now we're saying that we're gonna send 31 Abrams. Now I know Abrams tanks are the biggest and baddest on the planet, or at least they say they are. But 31, I can't imagine, is gonna be that big of a difference in this war. And to wait in a, another year to a year and a half to send them, I, I don't know. I mean, are, are they just saying this just to, to calm the people, just to make it look good? I, I just, I don't understand this game sometimes, uh, but there definitely is a game here. Uh, along with all this, the U.S. and South Korea took part in a tabletop exercise that focused on the possibility of North Korea using a nuclear weapon, the Pentagon said, Pentagon said on Thursday. Now, of course, this is after uh, North Korea said, hey, you keep doing this kind of stuff. You keep doing these these war games and, and this drills and these training between South Korea and, and the United States. It, we're going to have an issue. Uh, apparently, during this time, they, they launched an, another test missile. Um, uh, and they've been doing that a lot lately. Uh, <laughs> the point to all of this that, I, that I'm saying, and I know it, it's kind of, kind of convoluted, uh, video today just kind of throwing all this stuff out there and the point is is that <clears throat> while most Americans lives are being lived as normal as they can in 2023 and as many of you uh, are seeing all this other stuff going on you know the last couple of days the, the big talk has been Trump going to Ohio today the big Trump was to talk was uh, what Budapeg or whatever his name is. I, I have to be politically correct right now and not be vulgar and say something inappropriate because of who he is and his name. But um, <clears throat> anyways, he went to Ohio today. Um, there's, uh, there's still all kinds of industrial accidents happening and infrastructure falling apart and it's just a lot of stuff. Um, but this, this, this stuff going over there, we're, we're about to see, uh, I, I feel, and I could be wrong. And if I am, I'll certainly admit it because I'm not making a prediction. I'm just telling you in my gut that we're about to see things really start popping off. Once China gets involved in this, the world's going to change, folks. Um, China has a very large army, very, very large army, but they have a completely inexperienced army. So I would guess that China would love to be able to send some of their troops over to fight in this war so that they can get some experience and come back and train their own guys. Because they've never, they've, they haven't really been in a war in a long, long, long time. None of, none of their guys, none of their, their people have ever really fought and have any kind of combat experience. Um, could they be end up doing like what Europe is doing and create these foreign legions? Because that's what's going on in Europe. A lot of the people fighting for the Ukrainians are in foreign legions. Uh, from other countries and they're soldiers and they're they're quietly but definitely being encouraged by a lot of those countries militaries to hey once you go join this legion switch over to this legion you're technically not ours anymore and you go fight in ukraine are we going to start seeing that with china uh north korea's already said they would do it in fact i think north korea's already been sending people over as police officers um i could be wrong i hope that i am to some extent but I think we're about ready to see this Russia, Ukrainian, European war kind of, kind of explode. Uh, I believe it was uh, the Serbian president just a couple of days ago. That's what he said. He said, this war is on a knife's edge right now. It's about ready to blow up and get completely out of control. And I think that's what the powers wanted. Uh, we've got the military industrial complex wanting to make lots of money. Uh, funnel in all of our old equipment over there to Ukraine so that they can sell lots and lots of new stuff to the United States so they can go fight China. Uh, we've got us sending troops to Taiwan. Um, we've got China thumbing their nose at the West and, and, and continually building alliances with Russia. We've got stuff going on between Israel and Iran right now that's heating up. It, 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 Israel is, is openly saying that they are planning uh, to, to go to war against Iran because Iran is getting real close to developing a nuclear weapon. And they said they're, they're going to they're gonna do it before that happens. So get your houses in order, folks. It's, it's really time. It's time to, to get prepared. Um, yeah, I, think, I don't think we have much longer. 
I really don't. Um, I've heard people say 60 days. And at first when I heard that, I was like, oh, come on, that's, we probably got a little longer than that before this war really starts going. I'm not saying 60 days till the world ends. 60 days until this war explodes into a real World War III scenario. And, and the way things are looking now, I don't know that we have 60 days. Um, get out there, stock up, get ready, get as self-sufficient as you can because <clears throat> I don't think there's too much time left before this war just really does explode. Folks, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.